Assalamu alaikum, my name is Amna Irfan. I am from the department of BS Biotechnology and my role number is 023. And I will explain GCMS. The topic uh, of my presentation is tandem mass spectrometry, common mass spectrometer configuration and techniques, and separation techniques combined with mass spectrometry. Moving on to our first point that is tandem mass spectrometry. Tandem mass spectrometry is also known as MSMS or MS care. Is a technique in instrumental anal analysis where two or more mass analyzers are coupled together. Using an additional reaction step to increase their abilities to analyze chemical sample, a tandem mass spectrometer is one capable of multiple rounds of mass spectrometry, usually separated by some form of molecule fragmentation. For example, one mass analyzer can isolate one peptide from many entering a mass spectrometer. A second mass analyzer then stabilizes the peptide ion while they collide with the gas, causing them to fragment by collision induced dissociation, CID. A third mass analyzer then sorts the fragments produced from the peptide. Tandem mass spectrometer can also be done in a single mass analyzer over time, as in a quadrupole ion trap. There are various methods of fragmenting molecules from tandem mass spectrometry, including collision induced dissociation CID, electron capture dissociation ECD, electron transfer dissociation ETD, infrared multiphoton dissociation IRM PD, black body infrared radioactive dissociation BIRD, electron detachment dissociation EDD, and surface induced dissociation SID. An important application using tandem mass spectrometry is in protein identification. Moving on to its basic principle, it can be performed by first selecting and isolating a precursor ion MS2, fragmenting it, isolating a primary fragment ion MS3, fragmenting it, isolating a secondary fragment MS4, and so on, as long as you can obtain meaningful information or the fragment ion signal is detachable. The diagram under the basic principle shows the whole process that how sample is first ionized and then changed into precursor ion. After that, the fragmentation process occurs and uh, separation occurs on the basis of M over Z ratio, which then form product ion and then it is detected and shown on the screen in the form of graphs. Then we'll have tandem mass spectrometer types. There are two types of tandem, tandem in space and tandem in time. Now first I will, I will explain tandem in space. The separation elements are physically separated and distinct. There is a physical connection between the element to maintain high vacuum. These elements can be sectors, transmission, quadrupole, or time of flight. Then second one is tandem in time. The separation is accomplished with iron trapped in the same place with multiple separation steps taking place over time. A quadrupole ion trap or FTMS instrument can be used for such an analysis. Trapping instrument can perform multiple steps of analysis, which is sometimes referred to as MSN, or we can say that MS to the end. Then we'll have four main scan experiments, which is possible using MSMS. The first one is precursor ion scan. A precursor ion scan cannot be done with time-based MS instruments. Note that precursor ion is synonymous with parent ion, product ion with daughter ion. However, the use of these anthropomorphic terms is discouraged. A precursor ion is selected in the first stage allowed to fragment. Then all resultant masses are scanned in the second mass analyzer and detected in the detector that is positioned after the second mass analyzer. Second one is selected reaction monitoring. Both mass analyzer are set to a selected mass. This mode is analogous to selected ion monitoring for MS experiment. Selected reaction monitoring is a method used in tandem mass spectrometry in which an ion of a particular mass is selected in the first stage of a tandem mass spectrometer and an ion product of a fragmentation reaction of the precursor ion is selected in the second mass spectrometer stage for detection. 
Then the third one is neutral loss scan. The first mass analyzer scan all the masses. The second mass analyzer also scan, but at a set offset from the first mass analyzer. This offset corresponds to a neutral loss that is commonly observed for the class of compounds. Neutral loss scans can, cannot be done with time-based MS instruments. In a constant neutral loss scan, all precursors that undergo the loss of a specific common neutral are monitored. Then we'll have notation of tandem mass spectrometer. That whole sample is first ionized and changed into precursor ion. After the separation and fragmentation process by the collision of photons on the uh, surface of precursor ion, it is changed into product ion, that is MS2, which is separated on the basis of M over Z ratio. And after that, it is detected by detectors and shown on the screen in the form of graphs. Then we'll have fragmentation in tandem mass spectrometry. The first one is in source fragmentation. If the product ion persists in their non-equilibrium state for a moderate amount of time before auto dissociation, this process is called metastable fragmentation. Nozzle schemal fragmentation refers to the purposeful induction of in-source fragmentation by increasing the nozzle schemal potential on yearly electrospray-based instruments. It is not technically tandem mass spectrometry unless metastable ions are mass analyzed or selected before auto dissociation and a second stage of anal analysis is performed on the resulting fragment. The second one is post-source fragmentation. Energy can be added to the ion which are usually already vibrationally excited through post-source collisions with neutral atom or molecule. The absorption of radiation or transfer or capture of an electron by a multiple charge ion. Collion-induced dissociation, also called collionally activated dissociation, CAD, involves the collision of an ion with a neutral atom or molecule in the gas phase and subsequent dissociation of the ion. Then the diagram shows the post-source fragmentation that how the whole process occurred. Then the last one is peptide fragmentation. As the peptide name peptide indicate that it involves amino acids and peptide chains. A peptide sequence that obtained by tandem mass spectrometry can be used to identify a peptide in a protein database. A notation has been developed for indicating peptide fragment fragments that arise from a tandem mass spectrometer. Peptide fragments ion are indicated by A, B, or C if the charge is retained on the N terminus and by X, Y, or Z if the charge is maintained on the C terminus. The subscript indicates the number of amino acid residue fragments. The side diagram shows that how peptide is fragmented into their respective amino acids. After that, we will discuss how tandem mass spectrometry sequencing works. The first one is use tandem MS2 mass analyzer in series with a collision cell in between. Second point is collision cell, a region where the ions collide with gas, which is uh, mainly noble gas, helium, neon, argon, and so on, resulting in fragmentation of the ion. Third point is fragmentation of the peptide occur in a peptide predictable fashion, mainly at the peptide bonds. Then fourth one is the resulting daughter ions have masses that are consistent with known molecular weights of dipeptide, tripeptide, tetrapeptide, and so on. And that's for peptide fragmentation. Then we'll have uh, for the explanation of Tandem mass spectrometry. Tandem mass spectrometry enables a variety of experimental sequence. Many commercial mass spectrometers are designed to expedite the execution of such routine sequencing as selective reaction monitoring, SRM, and precursor ion scanning. In SRM, the first analyzer allow only a single mass through and the second analyzer monitor for multiple user-defined fragments. Ion. SRM is mostly often used with scanning instrument where the second mass analyzer event is duty cycle limited. These experiments are used to increase specificity of detection of known molecules. Notably in pharmacokinetic studies, 
precursor ion scanning refer to monitoring for a specific loss from the precursor ion. The first and second mass analyzer scan across the spectrum as partitioned by a user defined m over z value. The experiment is used to detect specific motifs within unknown molecules. Another type of tandem mass spectrometry used for radiocarbon dating is accelerated mass spectrometry AMS, which uses very high voltage usually in the megavolt range to accelerate negative ions into a type of tandem mass spectrometry. Then we'll have common mass spectrometer configuration and techniques. When a specific com combination of source analyzer and detector become conventional in practice, a compound acronym may arise to designate it succinctly. One example is MALDI and TOF, which refers to combination of a matrix-assisted laser desorption ionization source with a time of flight mass analyzer. Other example include inductivity coupled plasma mass spectrometry ICPMS, accelerator mass spectrometry AMS, thermal ionization mass spectrometry TIMS, and spark source mass spectrometry SSMS. Certain applications of mass spectrometry have developed monikers that, although strictly speaking, would seem to refer to a broad application. In practice, have come instead to can note a specific or a limited number of instrument configuration. An example of this is isotope ra ratio mass spectrometry IRMS, which refers in practice to the use of a limited number of sector-based mass analyzers. The name is used to refer to both the application and the instrument used for the application. Moving on to separation techniques combined with MS. An important enhancement to the mass resolving and mass determining capabilities of mass spectrometry is used it in tandem with chromatographic and other separation techniques. First one is gas chromatography. A common combination is gas chromatography mass spectrometry. In this technique, a gas chromatograph is used to separate different compounds. This term stream of separated compound is fed online into the ion source. A metallic filament to which voltage is applied. This filaments emit electron which ionize the compound. The ion can then further fragment, yielding predictable pattern. Intact ion and fragment pass into the mass spectrometer's analyzer and are eventually detected. The second one is liquid chromatography. Similar to gas chromatography, liquid chromatography mass spectrometry separates compounds chromatographically before they are introduced to the ion source and the mass spectrometer. It differs from DCMS in that the mobile phase is liquid, usually a mixture of water and organic solvent instead of gas. Most commonly an electrospray ionization source is used in LCMS. Other popular and commercially available LCMS ion source are atmospheric pressure chemical ionization and atmospheric pressure photo ionization. There are also some newly developed ionization techniques like laser, like laser spray. Then the third one is capillary electrophoresis mass spectrometry. Capillary electrophoresis mass spectrometry is a technique that combines the liquid separation process of capillary electrophoresis with mass spectrometry. CEMS is typically coupled to electrospray ionization. The last one is ion mobility. Ion mobility spectrometry mass spectrometry is a technique where ion are first separated by drift time through some neutral gas under an applied electrical potential gradient before being introduced into a mass spectrometer. Drift time is a measure of the radius relative to the charge of the ion. The duty cycle of IMS, the time over which the experiment takes place, is longer than most mass spectrometric techniques, such that the mass spectrometer can sample along the source of IMS separation. This produces data about the IMS separation and the mass to charge ratio of the ion in a manner similar to LCMS. The duty cycle of IMS is short relative to liquid chromatography of gas or gas chromatography 
separations and can thus be coupled to such techniques producing triple modalities such as LC, IMS, MS. That's all from my side. Thank you.